CNC machining can be a lot to take in. Multi-access machines, insane tool pads, and precision setups. But today we're gonna to be going back to the basics and breaking down the heart of it all. The tools, specifically for CNC milling. What they do, how we choose them, and why every detail matters when you're machining complex parts for space. When deciding our tools, we need to keep a few things in mind. The material we're cutting and how that affects the flute count, coating, and surface speed. At Astronus, we work with everything from aluminum to titanium and steel. Every part includes the primary steps of roughing, finishing, and deburring. So let's see what the best tools are for these three processes. Roughing is the first stage of machining. It's not about making the part look pretty, it's about removing material as efficiently as possible. But that comes with real challenges. Heat, chip evacuation, and tool wear. So here's how we tackle it at our shop. We usually run tools with a 35 to 40 degree helix angle with a variable pitch. It's what we prefer for removing material without overloading the tool and minimizing chatter. And we always use chip breakers. Without them, the long stringy chips get tangled up and get stuck in the machine conveyors. For aluminum, we use helical three flute end mills. Fewer flutes means we get better chip evacuation and we can take a wider cut. And since aluminum is soft, we don't need as rigid of a tool. Number of flutes is always a trade-off between how wide of a step over you can take and how rigid the core diameter of the end mill is. For titanium and steel, we use Helical's five flute tools. But here's the trick. We cut way slower, about 2,500 RPM on a half inch end mill, compared to an average of 12,000 RPM for aluminum. When cutting titanium, we are limited by the surface speed because of heat building up and the material welding to the tool. Since aluminum is a much softer material, we can run at a very high surface speed, so we are mostly limited by the rigidity of the setup or the horsepower of the spindle. And one last thing, corner radius. You don't want a sharp corner on a rougher. A 30 thousandths of an inch radius helps spread out the cutting forces and keep the tip of the tool alive longer. That's roughing. Now let's move on to finishing. Finishing is really where precision kicks in. At this stage, we're not removing a lot of material, but we are dialing in our tolerances and surface finishes. At Astronus, we break finishing down into three categories, floors, walls, radiuses, or what we like to call 3D surfaces. To finish floors and walls, we like to use a three flute end mill on aluminum and a five fluter for titanium and stainless steels. Depending on the geometry, the tool may have no radius or really small one. Like this one, it has 15 thousandths on the corner. When our parts have hard to reach areas, we like to use a ball end mill. Take this 3 8 three fluter for example. It can finish a lot of geometry, but it's slower and less efficient than a flat end mill because of the small step overs it has to take. Finishing surfaces gets a little more complicated on curved geometry, or what we like to call 3D surfaces. Helico makes really nice ball end mills for 3D surfaces. One of the tools we use to speed up this process is this barrel mill. This one right here is a 3 8 four fluter. It has a three inch major radius. We can also use this half inch circle lens tool. It has the same three inch major radius, both of these tools complement our nine and five axis CNC machines so we can use them to its fullest capacity. Now that we're done with finishing, let's move on to deburring. Deburring is the final step, but it's just as critical as any other tool path. Every time we cut metal, a sharp edge or a burr would form. If we leave it, the part might look unfinished, feel sharp to the touch, or even worse. Those burrs can break off and become foreign object debris. And when you're building satellites, even the tiny sliver of metal can damage the sensitive electronics. That's why we try to handle as much of deburring on the machine as possible. It's easy to overlook, but for us, it's the key part of the program. We use different tools depending on the geometry. For standard edge breaks on our three axis parts, we use 45 degree chamfer mill, usually a quarter inch harvey. For more complex shapes, the tapered ball end mills work great especially with Fusion 360's D-Bird toolpath, which lets us follow the 3D contours cleanly. And for those hard to reach features, like the backside of the hole, we use the lollipop end mills for our multi-axis machines. Whether it's manual or automated, deburring isn't just for looks. It's about protecting the satellite from internal damage, avoiding foreign object debris, and making sure that every part is truly flight ready. And that's the final step, 
from tool selection to roughing, finishing, and deburring. It all comes down to choosing the right tool for the job. So if you enjoyed the video, subscribe to our channel.